Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting of the Ordinance Committee to order on tonight, Tuesday, September 25th at 6.30. I'll accept a motion to take up agenda item one, previous so moved. minutes. Is there a second? Okay. On okay. favor? Aye. Aye. So before us, we have previous meeting minutes, which you've all had for a while. They're from June 12th, July 17th, and July 31st. Motion to receive and accept. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to take up item number two and open the... It's a special permit. Continue the public hearing, right? Isn't that special? Um, a we tabled hearing? it at the last meeting for clarification on process. So motion to take up... Item number two off the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item two, special permit application from Westfield Bank for installation of an automatic teller machine at 1650 Northampton Street. So at our last meeting, we'd had a, a robust discussion and feedback relative to concerns raised and options offered. And sort of at the la laid out the gate, we had a question about process and whether we were in the right venue. So we tabled to get clarification on that. Since then, I've had no further communication. So uh, my interpretation was that we're in the right venue. But I will, ex Crystal, if you need to weigh in at all, I'll get a motion to suspend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, we actually also have Marcos here from planning tonight, I think, to clarify further, if you okay. want to request information like from him. Okay. I've been sort of playing middleman, so that might be more helpful to you. All right, thank you. I'd so, like to suspend the rules and allow Mark so All in favor? Aye. 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 Hello, Mr. Marrero. Either, whatever you prefer. Make yourself at home. Just make sure the green light's on. Hello. So Good do evening. I start? Do you start? What are you, what are we so doing? the question before us is, and we had already been in more than one meeting relative to this application, and at the last meeting the question was raised as to whether it was properly before us for a special permit. Right. Um, and I assume it, we, it was stipulated that copies of the application had been sent to all the various departments. And absent feedback from the departments, um, the interpretation was that we were in the proper venue to move forward with the special permit for the ATM. Well, uh, so the first thing I'd like to correct is I, I know and I see in, in one of the application documents that uh, planning was copied. We can't find a version of this that we got. So um, I, other than on the margins of my consciousness when I'm here seeing something about Westfield Bank on an agenda, this didn't really hit our radar until a couple of weeks ago when actually Nabutter showed up to our office to bring it to our attention. So we've done some, some documentary research uh, to try to track this back. Um, so you have a special, per so as I talked to uh, Councillor Anderson Burgos this morning when he, when he asked me about this and asked me to come here to clarify some things, I, I believe there are three things in play that I've that I've seen from the documents over the past couple of weeks. Two are of use and one is of dimensional controls. So the first thing is an automatic teller machine does not require a special permit. What you have before you is a special permit for an automatic teller machine. And so I think that may have created, created some, some confusion. Um, automatic teller machines in the, in the zone where this is located are allowed by right as an accessory use to a bank what happens is that they're installing an automatic teller machine as part of a drive-through facility. So that is, in our ordinances, codified as a separate use. And because this particular drive-through facility had not been used in a certain, in a very long time, it's not, it's not grandfathered. It has to go through the special permit process. Okay, so it's the drive-up aspect of the application rather than the ATM that is causing for this. Correct. Okay. Correct. Which is uh, also included in the application. Right. Okay. So I would, so I would, uh, you know, this maybe it's a suggestion. I don't know, but I would take the 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 spirit of the application is in uh, is to meet the requirements of the special permit under the zoning ordinance section seven one six. Um, however, for, for the planning board to review 
a special permit application and provide feedback as per section 716 there will be some elements that we will need to see that aren't here because the ordinance spe specifically calls for things to review right we're not reviewing color <laughs> uh, we're reviewing you know the queue lengths um, making sure that um, where cars are going isn't in conflict with pedestrians and that sort of thing that, that that's the type of stuff that would encompass the the comments from the planning staff and the board towards the ordinance committee so you know first thing is allowed by right atms second thing is special permit for a drive-through which i i suppose this could be interpreted as that special permit application this would be the right forum however if comments are required from the planning board then we would just need some additional information from the applicant right third item um, comes from a letter dated may 22nd from the uh, building commissioner uh, that indicates that the existing structure of the drive-through is uh, a non-conforming structure due to its dimensional uh, due to dimensional controls right it's 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 very close to the property line on the back i believe so would that if that were proposed today it would not be allowed because it doesn't meet the setbacks uh, the city council has the ability under zoning code section 473 uh, to uh, provide relief for that and the structure can be reused but that is another special permit that needs to be applied for so this is, the council can decide to take them up at the same time or or take one after the other um, but one way or any other, if the, if, if the applicant wishes to use the existing structure as part of the drive-through, then they will have to uh, get to two special permits. That one does not get, that 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 non-conforming structure special permit does, uh, to my knowledge, does not get input from, from planning staff. So, you know, one way of, of resolving this is if they were to apply for that non-conforming structure, um, you know, presumably they don't have to apply for 716 because they've already submitted their application fee and advertised for that one um, they could they could advertise for the non-conforming structure I would I would suggest that they and that in the advertisement they specifically call it out as a drive-through just to fix any misperceptions of this being a special permit for an ATM um, and then taking it up maybe even jointly I'm gonna need you to reduce this to writing for the committee <laughs> Well, the, the, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of summarizing what the building commissioner already reduced to writing on May 22nd. He's indicating that they need a special permit for a commercial drive-through use. Um, that it's no longer grandfathered. Which is what we were doing. Yes, that that was what, before <laughs> us, and that's what we were discussing. Right. But, so what I want to be but, have a clarification on is what has to happen next in the process because i hear you saying this and i then i hear you saying but it could be that it's and, more of an and, and than a but it's, as far it's, as I understand. It, it's an and they, they need it, it seems like they need two special permits you have one of them before you but they haven't submitted for the second one so they need to submit the so the second special permit for non-conforming structures under ordinance code 473. now the applicant has stipulated to us that they did speak to staff before filing this application we, I, I can't verify that that we've spoken from anyone they've spoken from uh, people at the building department as far as I can tell we had one brief conversation with someone in in the building department early on but we haven't been involved in this process and it was also stipulated that the application was sent out to all the departments so it seems like something might have got lost potentially i can't i can't verify that anything was sent to us so but if if i heard you correctly i heard you describe a process where the planning board would be involved would need to be involved that's, relative to the drive through that's correct the current special permit uh, before you uh, which is under code 716 it calls for a review and recommendations it, you know it's a comment letter to the ordinance committee but you also stated that the ATM portion does not require a special permit well if you if you were just to make the ATM in and of itself doesn't but section 716 calls for any drive-through use including that for a restaurant or a financial institution or an ATM would so it's not the fact that you have a machine that dispenses money 
it is that you would have a uh, a queue of cars and that structure that allows that aspect. to do it. Yes. So in practical terms, because I think this is really, really late in a process that's been going on in fairness to the applicant and we're all working really hard here being business friendly, it sounds like they're gonna have to go back to square one or we're gonna be running into timeline problems with the fact that we opened up our hearing if we consider this the hearing for the drive-through and then planning will have to advertise and open up a hearing. We, we don't to have give to comment. Sure, we don't have to uh, have a public hearing advertise um, in the ordinance. Usually when the ordinance talks about, you know, planning, having, having comment, we mm -hmm. just do it through staff. Uh, this ordinance specifically was written in a way where the board itself would also have comment. So what we, well, it just adds one small step where staff writes up the comments and they share it with the planning board at a meeting. It doesn't have to be advertised as a public hearing. It doesn't have to have the two week turnaround and the advertising in that way. Oh, um, well, gee. So it would have been great if we could have had that tonight. Well, we don't have the materials for it. So that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm asking, one of the issues that was brought to, to my intention was why hasn't planning provided any comments? And so it just, it hasn't been on our radar. And I, I understand that there are some documents that, that say it's been sent to planning. We, we don't have those documents. Okay, but as of the last meeting that we had, it was then public information that this was a question that we needed the answers to and if there was information to be brought to bear in the interest of expedience for the applicant and in response to the abutters who have concerns, um, you know, the goal was to be able to pull this together and straighten it out um, and hopefully have that information tonight. So I guess my question- well, We can't evaluate a site plan that hasn't been generated. That's, that, that's a point. So, we, so when we're told why hasn't planning provided information, so we track that back and we ask, you know, can someone some, give to us Literally, can someone send us what was what was applied for? And so we recently got these documents, and they don't contain the information that we would need to provide commentary. And so, how would you get that? Uh, we would need the applicant to submit it. And how would you ask them for that? Oh, we have. Okay, so that request has gone out to the applicant. Yes. And when did that go? Uh, last week, sometime. <clears throat> So there was a phone conversation between Jeff Burkott and a representative from Westfield Bank. Do you know who? Uh, hang on a second. Hang, hang on just a second. Um, do you know who he spoke with? Uh, no, I thought I thought it was uh, a lawyer, but I, I don't know the name. OK. Uh, is there any more information that you wish to provide? For that's us now? that's all I have. Okay, thank you. So, uh, through me, you may ask a question. Yes. This. And and just we would need to. I'm sorry. You can ask a question. Very good. Jim Donahue, representing Westfield Bank. Uh, I heard it's hard to hear back here what he's saying because it's sort of flowing to you. But my understanding is that there's some issue with a drive-through under section 7.6 of the code? Um, yes, drive in or drive yes. in? Yes. That's supposed to apply to the bank? Yes. The ATM? Because, because section 7.6. 716. Drive throughs, take out restaurants. So it's drive in and take out restaurants is what it applies to. It doesn't apply to banks or drive ins in general. It's just dealing with restaurants. So our question is we don't mind complying with what your ordinance requires, but we've read this fairly thoroughly and couldn't find anything dealing with a drive in review by the planning board except under drive in, take out restaurants. Okay, thank you for the question. And, um, uh, section 716 uh, was, I don't know if the section is new or if it was modified that way, so I can't speak to the exact number. It's possible that uh, the gentleman has an older version of the, of the ordinance. Uh, when it was last modified, it does include um, for financial uses. 
including ATMs. The version of the ordinance I'm using is the one that the city has online. Muni code? The Muni code? No, the, the uh, ordinance is the zoning um, ordinance the city. Through the clerk's yes. office? Under suspension of rules, Crystal, can you weigh in on the... I'm trying to find the... We did... Um, we did update it. I know it's updated online. I'm just trying to pull it up. As I've just been told by our city engineer, uh, that under the ordinance, DPW also has to receive a copy for the drive through. Usually, these um, have concerns of uh, queuing, backing up in the public right away. Um, so, presumably, that's why a copy goes to them, and they have not received a copy either. So, you know, something got lost um, or just was not understood by, by the fact that the application was for a special permit for an ATM. So I have uh, under 7162 applicability, drive-through facilities or commercial facilities which provide a service directly to a motor vehicle or where the customer drives a motor vehicle. Continue on, uses may include restaurants, retail establishments, pharmacies, financial institutions, and automatic teller machines. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have clarification on that, but um, so at this point, then, we need to have input from your department. On the use. And apparently, pardon? On the use, on the use permit. Relative to that. And we have to have input from DPW relative to the drive-through queuing. Crystal, can you remind us of who the applicant application had been sent to? I know it was in the previous meeting that you informed us I mean, there's a cover page on it that says they CC and it's various departments and it depends on which special permit it's for. Right, Planning okay. department is listed, but yeah, I mean, there's okay. no way of knowing. We don't okay. sign them I off. Hear you. We're, uh, we're renovating our special permit so submission we mark techniques. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So at this point, then, there's no advertising needed for the planning board to remedy this situation. We simply need to make sure the application is to DPW, you have it, your request is out for whatever it is you need to come back to us. Correct. We just need a complete application. So um, could I ask that you provide that to the applicant in writing? It just sounds like with these phone calls and this, it seems sure, that's like things are getting lost. And that's fine. I like to see a paper trail. So if we could have that, that would be great. And um, unfortunately for all involved, applicant, abutters, et cetera, um, we're going to have to continue to table this till we get all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. Um, on behalf of all of us, I apologize. I think this makes a process unnecessarily painful, yet we have to do our due diligence. So I thank you for your patience, and we will have to take this up at a future meeting Amendment yet again. <laughs> Councilor Barker. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I thought that the General Counsel for Westville Bank wanted to make a comment relative to a conversation he has, so if he does, and if oh. he wants to come to my microphone, I wanted to hear what he has oh, to sure. say. And then also, I just under uh, for, under our zoning ordinances, 4.4.4 ATM is an accessory structure. Crystal? Okay. Uh, it, why would that not be applicable in this in this instance? Because this one's a drive-through, so that applies more to say if you wanted to put an ATM where you see them kind of like attached to a bank or if ATM is an accessory structure this is an access what Westfield Bank has is an accessory structure in the case of that an ATM is freestanding the following consideration shall be made and then it go and if I may uh, 
uh, the ATM shall not be situated as close to cause vehicles to queue onto adjacent rows. The ATM shall be provided with three parking spaces. Traffic circulation for the ATM shall not interfere with the parking spaces. So I think that answers your question. It's not for vehicles to queue, and if this one is going to be a drive-through, it needs to follow the drive-through ordinance. Well, it, the ATM should not be situated so as to cause vehicles to queue onto adjacent roads. So, so this, so this, in this case, I just I want to be clear. So this is not an ATM as an accessory structure. This is an ATM as a drive-through. That's my understanding from the. Application. Well, it's both, really. It is an accessory Madam structure. Chair, Madam Chair, can I, can I just... the floor. Sure. I mean, for heaven's sake. I'll put you in the queue. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay. So then, then the question then becomes, who, who's, re who's responsible for, for advising, uh, advising the applicant as to, as to which, which section of the... I mean, does does the does the city clerk not not get information from the law department or from planning? I mean, how, how I mean, they're they have legal counsel which would advise them on what to apply under. We don't advise people. We we the city we we don't advise what people. We can assist. We can answer questions, but I can't. I mean, I don't even get a special permit application unless I need to see it after city council has it. So I can't advise anyone of anything. This question wasn't brought to me until it hit city council. Okay, thank you. I just want to hear from the lawyer when you have a chance, ma'am, sure. Yes, in one minute. Council Lisi. Yeah, so I think in this case, we have an accessory structure that is looking for a drive-through lane attached to it and it's the queuing and the drive-through component of the accessory structure that's triggering the, the use, the special permit for use of the drive-through. So it's not one or the other, but both, both the ordinances are applying here. I think that it's, um, you know, we, we do try to make it very um, easy for applicants to understand like which ordinances are going to apply to them. I know that we've talked several times about having a checklist and having um, you know some documents available, but we never represent anyone in terms of creating some sort of le legal counsel. Um, we, we can point to the ordinances that you have to follow, but those questions need to be asked. Right, and that's what we're doing. Mr. Marrero. I mean, to provide some context, I mean, we regularly get questions on, you know, do you think this will apply to us or right. not? Um, and you know, we don't provide legal advice. We're not lawyers, and we're not, we don't you know take on the liability. But we right. we we will give guidance on that. Um, unfortunately, in this case, and I I can't address as to why we didn't get. And I just I wouldn't know. <coughs> just for whatever reason, we weren't aware of it. I will say though that uh, it looks like a week after the special permit application, there was a letter you know, in in writing from the building commissioner. It, it, seemingly advising them directly of that, that they would need a special permit for commercial drive through use and a special permit for a non-conforming structure. So they were advised back on May 22nd. I, I can only assume that some, well, maybe they didn't get this letter. It's addressed to the city council. But, if I may. Councilor Lacey. Thank you. But, yeah, and we had that letter before us, and I think that's what triggered the confusion. Like, is, is, was the permit for the ATM for the use or for the non-conforming structure. And that's why there was confusion at the last meeting. Um, and what we failed to realize then was that there's actually two permits and only one was advertised for. And really, um, in some ways, you could say that the advertisement was flawed, flawed because it wasn't for um, an ATM, which is allowed by right, but it's, it's for the drive-through component and the use. So Correct. Even, even that advertising, um, you know, it's flawed. Nonetheless, we have before us the ATM with a drive-through. And just for clarity, and I know I'm repeating, but my understanding is at the time that we need to get an advisory letter once you receive the information from the applicant from planning, and that a copy of the application has to go to DPW for them to also advise the committee. Correct. And then we're good to go. Well, and if I may. If I can, 
Yes. Uh, those two at the very least. I don't know if there are other departments that have to comment or if other departments didn't that needed to okay. get it. You, you know, like I don't, I, don't, of, I don't know if everyone else got it. Or, but in terms <laughs> from your perspective. From my, at the very least, yeah, planning needs to get a, a, a full a full submittal and DPW. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Lisi. And I don't want us to forget about the additional permit that needs to be advertised for regarding the non-conforming structure because of the setbacks. So we, we, we shouldn't simply be focusing on this use question. Yes, that, that's pretty easy to tie up in terms of the information that's been filed and, and out there, but there's never been an advertisement or application filed for the non-conforming structure. That's also correct. So in this regard, it is the eight, it is the drive-through that you're saying is a non-conforming structure? There, there, there is a, a structure as part of the drive-through lane right uh, there's a vertical structure in the back of the property right so that um, if that were to be built today it is within the setbacks and it would not be allowed because uh, but they can they can reuse it if they go through uh, an affirmative vote by the city council under section 473 non-conforming structures so there are two special if they want to have a drive-through for an ATM using the existing structure they need two special permits from this body one is for the drive through itself which is no longer grandfathered that is the submission that you have here although incomplete and the second special permit has not been filed they would have to file that um, to council Lisi's point to address the dimensional setbacks I'm sorry, can you repeat what okay so what i am hearing is that we have properly before us the application relative to the ATM and the drive-through aspect of it, but we need further information from planning and DPW. <coughs> and we're being informed that there needs to be a second special permit relative to a non-conforming structure for the Existing. structural component of the drive-through. We're, we're happy to provide this in writing to, to the Well, other. and that's what I asked earlier in the meeting because yep. it's getting a little circular and a little confusing, so I think it would be clearer if it was in writing. We filed an application to alter a non-conforming structure, which was the pedestal that was used where the ATM machine was going to be placed. And we submitted the machine that we were going to put there so we've requested to put the ATM machine on the existing site that's there. We're not asking for anything more to be done. So I don't know what other special permit we need. All of that should have been encompassed in the paperwork that was sent to your departments. And, and as I understand it further, planning's response here is to review the application and to make recommendations. To your board there's no public hearing there's no hearing at all involved with planning correct I'm, I'm lost as to what dpw is responding to because we're not changing anything on the site except putting the atm that's in the original material we filed on the existing right pedestal. so so relative to that that has to do with the drive-through aspect yep. because it hadn't been used as a drive-through for some time so that is relating to that part. The um, non-conforming structure is a separate issue that is being raised relative to the drive-through. So, and, and Mr. Marrero has said that he will reduce that to writing so that it's clear <coughs> what that means and what it is because if I, if I may, I mean, we had a conversation at the last city council meeting, I'm sorry, last ordinance committee meeting about um, the fact that there was an existing pad there for the, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember what the word is, for the canisters, right? Um, and our ordinance, are, have, our ordinance have changed so that based on the footprint of this lot, there's no longer a rear, but there's two sides. And that is what's triggering the non-conforming structure. And we, we did have a conversation about this. And again, this is why the confusion came up at the last meeting. Are we, are we the, the application that was filed was about an ATM. 
and it was unclear about whether what was before us was the special permit for the use or the special permit for the non-conforming structure, which is why we put, the, put this conversation and process on hold to get some more clarity. And now we understand more clearly um, there's a use special permit, there's a non-conforming stru uh, structure. Because if, if I of, might, through, that's the, through the chair, right. please. The ATM is an allowed use, whether it's a freestanding or an accessory use in the business highway zone. The yep. fact that it's never been used there or the site that was once a drive-up teller hasn't been used doesn't get into the issue of a non-conforming use. That's not on the site. Everything we're asking for is permitted as a matter of right under your zoning bylaw. The only issue that we should be dealing with here with your departments, mm -hmm. and I don't know why they haven't responded, but I assume there's a good reason, is that they report back whether or not there is some site issue with the ATM going on this location. But not for a, an abandoned use, as I keep hearing people say, and as I it's saw It's not an abandoned use. I'm bill. sorry, I think you're mishearing now, me. Uh, excuse me, this isn't a debate. We have to... In, in a letter from the building commissioner that the abutter had at the That's last the session, He's speaking. the building commissioner talks about He did about cut me off, though, use. previously. Thank you. And that's not the case here. And, and, and unless I'm missing it from the department heads here, we're dealing with the non-conforming structure. The non-conformity is that we don't have a backyard. It's located. And we're looking to put the ATM on that Correct. existing structure. Correct. And, and, and I think that at this moment is the crux of the problem, is the non-conforming structure which has not been before us, which is it, part it's, of It's this. what we filed for. That's, well, our, that's our application. Well, here is, the, here is what the application says. It says, installation of an automatic teller machine on an existing pad used previously for a drive-up teller. All required infrastructure for the ATM is already in place at the proposed site. Um, now, Mr. Marrero, does that not refer to a structure, or well, so, does you know, it? Two, two things. Uh, one is, if, if the applicant would rather this submission be considered the submission for the non-conforming structure, you know, fine. Then we still need a second special permit for a drive-through. The, the, the bottom line is that there needs to be two special permits submitted one for a non-conforming structure, one for a use. The so, it, so let me just understand that if this application includes both things that we can't issue more than one special permit, they have to have a separate application, even if... Every, every special permit needs a, spe a, a, a separate application. A spe separate application document, a separate application fee, a public hearing, yes. Okay, so you're saying this application could stand as either one I'm 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 trying to I'm I'm trying to bend on this to accommodate well, the, the, to... The, the, the odd situation we're in on the face of it this is an application for a special permit that doesn't exist in the city of Holyoke I mean that's right if if you want me to be very frank so I'm saying we could take the spirit of this application <clears throat> to be one of the things that the applicant needs it seemed to me like it was in the spirit of a drive-through because an automatic teller machine itself doesn't need a special permit. It only needs it in the in the sense that it is a drive-through, right? Okay. That's why that's why I'm backing into this is the application for 716. If the applicant is uncomfortable with that, I, I I mean I don't have a dog in the fight. If if they would rather it be considered an application for 473, that's perfectly fine. The, on the abandonment issue, and this is what, what's in the building commissioner's letter of May 22nd, uh, I don't think he's making a value judgment on the building being abandoned or anything like that. It's just that happens to be the name of the section of the ordinance. I'll give you a, a third number, <laughs> section 476, which basically says that a use loses its protected status it's grandfathered status after two years of not being used. Mm -hmm. So had this drive-through been used continuously over the last two years, or at some point in the last two years, they wouldn't have to get a special permit for a drive-through. But because they have not, they lose that protected status. Okay, so let me just ask this question in a practical way, sort of from a lay person's point of view. So if the bank's main goal was to have an ATM, 
separate from the bank. And say for purposes of discussion, as theoretical, this is a theoretical question, they decide they want the ATM for the moment, they don't care if it's a drive through ATM or a walk up to the ATM. Under this, they wouldn't even need anything if they just wanted to put the ATM out there and not have it be a drive through If, if they had a, an ATM that was in conformity of section 444, then, then they don't need a special permit. So, okay, so the two issues are, and they become two, which I do think is a little odd, but I hear what you're saying about the ordinances because a drive-through would seem to be, if you have a drive-through and it has a canopy, it's still a drive-through, but that is the structural aspect of it that requires the separate permit. Right, our ordinance makes a differentiation between uses and uh, and and structures out of conformity because of dimensional controls, right? So there is a section that deals with this thing that's built is is out of compliance, and you can grant a you know relief from that. So that's one issue, and the other one is the use. So you can think of a drive-through use just like you think of a gas station use, or a you know whether it's a a restaurant or or housing. All these are uses. So drive-through is codified as a use. Okay, but getting back to the ATM. So if they put the ATM on the pad and say, people, you'll have to park your car and walk up to the ATM instead of sit in your car and reach the ATM, they could just do that tomorrow and come back and get the drive through and other stuff later if they wanted to. A, a reasonable person would, would probably conclude that it is a drive through ATM without permits. But I, I oh. mean, I'm not going to comment on how they could hack the ordinance. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm just asking if the ATM is allowed by right. An, they an, could an put the ATM. right an, a, an ATM in conformity with 444. So probably if they made an ATM and said this is guys, this really isn't a drive-through, but they put an ATM there, you know, someone could say, well, it's not in conformity with Section 444, but it, because it's allowing for queuing of cars, and therefore it's a drive-through. I I think the confusion is the drive-through and the structure. You know, I think. But anyway, we've thank you for your. And we're happy to input. put this all in writing for the applicant so they can please, go through please, this process. Please, and for the committee also. Sure. Um, because I think what happened with that May 22nd correspondence, it was sent to the city council. It got received by the city council. I don't have it with the application. So it wasn't sent to this committee? It doesn't appear to okay. have been. So I think it was received. And it doesn't appear that it went to the applicant either. So... Um, we're, so, Crystal, do you have any other insight into this? You concur with the information from planning that we can proceed with this and um, if the applicant would like to inform the committee, if you wish us to pursue and proceed with this special permit for the drive-through, or if you wish us to proceed with it as a special permit for a non-conforming non structure. structure, I guess. We filed for a non-conforming, we filed because it's a non-conforming structure okay. according to the building department to be a drive-through ATM. So, okay, so <coughs> you're, understanding was that you were applying for a non-conforming structure. Correct. Okay. That was the only reason that we were coming before the board. Okay. So now we understand because the drive through wasn't used for over two years though that that is an issue. I just want to be clear and I mean we're happy I, I, to proceed I, with I the... I understand that's what your departments are saying. <laughs> but, uh, but again, I have to say to you the sections that I'm hearing cited here are at odds with what we understand to be the sections that we've been required to deal with. Okay, and so, okay, I hear what you're saying, and so what I think we need to do, we're going to need to table this. If you wish us to understand that we're proceeding for the non-conforming structure, we can do that. Secondary to that, if I could have a motion from committee to request legal to weigh in relative to the drive-through question. Um, I would like to just get advised back 
formally relative to that. It just seems to be. <laughs> I mean, the, the issue, Sticking point. if I might, the, the, the concept of the law that is and, being... Excuse uh, me for a minute. I, I understand the points that you're making, but we're not in a position, I don't think, as a committee here tonight to come up with the answer to that. And so respectfully, I, I know this is a bump in the road and I know it's annoying, but we're just going to have to let... Crystal get back to us relative to that, and we can proceed relative to the non-conforming structure aspect. Councilor Lisi, did you wish to be recognized? No, thank you. Can you just clarify, what are you looking for from me? Okay, so. They need to apply for the second permit. We are pursuing this as the non-conforming structure under our ordinances. So now the question is, do they need to file for a special permit for the drive-through because it has not been in use for two years? Yes. So, so I, you have your answer from legal with, if you don't want to wait till the next meeting because she's just so I can letting make, us know that. Just so I can, my clients and I understand what's happening. Yes. Is it, is it the ordinance committee's position that you would vote up or down on our application for a pre-existing non-conforming structure amendment to put the ATM machine on the pedestal that's there. I believe we have received all the information we need relative to that. So that would be, you would vote on that and then the determination as to whether there's some other aspect that we need is gonna come from your law department? Well, our law department has advised us in the moment and that the, the letter it from would require a special permit application for the drive-through component. So we don't really need to make a referral to her because she's answered the question now. So that's where we stand. So we can act on the non-conforming structure aspect of the application. Which is our application, which, which is, is place, what we have before us. To place the ATM on the pedestal that's there, that either gets approved or denied here, and then the city may notify us that they're looking for something different. To go forward. They, they for need Councilor Lisi. Thank you. Really, in order to put the ATM on the existing pedestal, you need two special permits because one is for the structure because it's no longer in the rear; it's on the side because of the foot the the footprint of the of the lot and the changes that we made <coughs> to the ordinances and so you have two you have two sides instead of a rear now so the the setbacks no longer conform that's before us according to what we all discussed here what is not before us is the piece about the drive through and the queuing so you really need both they they're like two wings of a bird <laughs> You can't move forward unless you have these two par parts because you can't just put the ATM down there. The, the portion of the ordinance that you're talking about regarding ATM allowed by right is in a business zone if it were in a lobby or in a non-conforming structure where you're not forcing the queuing of cars. Back to the question, is any action going to be taken on our application that was being heard tonight or is it being held in abeyance until you decide what needs to be done with the drive through We're very well, clear the, about what needs to be done. You need to file a second special permit. We can't move forward on any approvals until we have both pieces in front of us. I'm, I'm looking just for a yes or no answer on that first question. So because they go hand in hand, we need to have that application for the drive through Seven point one point six. Seven point one point six. Seven mm -hmm. two, and I think and, wasn't and it two? Can I can I ask a, just to, to clarify to help me out a little bit, if you don't mind? I probably have the wrong section of seven point one six, or I'm just not understanding the way it's written. Uh, be bear with me a second. I believe the reference was seven point one. Point six two. That was just a section within that, right? That was just seven one six is the full ordinance, right? But two was the part that referenced the financial institutions.
Crystal? Apologize to my client. This section is not the section that's online as the copy of your ordinances. Your ordinances refer to applicability of driving strictly at drive in takeout restaurants. Oh. Um, so I, I, I can't I can't speak to that. I can only say for myself if I'm looking up our ordinances, I go to Municode and <coughs> look in there. But um, and I do apologize for any, you know, confusion or communication that didn't make it clear from the front end relative to the application to the extent that we could have provided it. But, um, and Crystal, I just want to make sure we're going to be okay with the timelines on this initial one. I'm trying to, I think we cl closed the public hearing, did we, last I believe meeting? so, and I think we said you have 90 days to make a final so we'll have to, if the application is put right in, all I can say is that we'll expedite it through the committee so that they can be meshed so that you won't lose out on the first one to accomplish the second one or the consideration <laughs> of it. I mean, potentially you could vote on this if you have a full submission in front of you you just can't drive through that ATM. Well, that was I mean, my that was the point of my earlier question. So I think I, mean, I would I'll encourage. I'll refer to Marcos because well, he yeah. didn't. In practice, what would happen is the building commissioner would not issue a building permit. Well, right, but see, we're run, we're in two things. We our our approval of the special permit for the non-conforming structure would not force the building commissioner to do anything. Correct. But it would Correct. it would protect the applicant from losing the ability yes. of all this work. Yes. And so I think it most properly would be considered by the committee relative to the structure. And um, getting back to that, um, what is the will of the committee? I think we've heard all the information. We've now addressed the questions that got raised from the communication of May 22nd. Um, if you're interested in, in continuing a conversation on, on that, I mean, I think that we have residents and uh, butters here that may want to chime in as well, so. Well, Crystal, uh, did we or did we not close the public hearing? I just don't have a clear note on that. Do you? I had written tabled for some reason. I, if the public hearing is closed, we cannot. Yeah. Can I make one more point before you close this up, just to muddy the waters even more? This drive-through that we're talking about where the ATM is going to go, it's a, it's a two-lane drive-through. It has never been taken out of full usage. It has the same characteristics that it had when it was designed, and the existing drive-up teller still uses the same traffic patterns and the same parking lot and the same clientele, basically. So that this really isn't a new drive-through or drive up, this is an existing drive up that was previously approved and is now right. being modified because it's a pre existing it's building as a prior non conforming structure. So, right, but, but and we're not saying that it, it wasn't used as that, but what we are saying is it had been out of use as that, and that's the, line the driving had, thing. I, I understand you on that, but. but I think we've kind of covered that. I, I, I guess I'm confused about the reason for this because why? If, if, if something has been out of use for two years, it then is considered new. And so, unfortunately, it's a two pronged exactly. aspect, which we were not clear on until we just got clarity. But, so, I mean, could you speak to I, and and we're not in a position to really continue debate on this. We've had our input from legal. We can do what we can do if it's the will of the committee. Uh, Councillor Nelson, 
Thank you. Yes, yes, Madam Chair. With all due respect to the applicant and the attorney, I think we've exactly we've exhausted it. In my opinion, mm -hmm. um, I am in the opinion of Councilor Lisi. I would like to see both at the same time. So my motion, which I'm going to make right now, because I feel we keep going back and forth, is that we table this to the next ordinance committee meeting just to get it right in the hopper right away. I'm not sure, you know, but I just want to see them both, Madam Chair. I don't feel again. I know there's a lot of moving parts. This is muddy. I want to see both applications to make sure everything's correct and everything's set back right that's just my emotion if nobody seconds it i'll respect that but i just i think if we get them both in two weeks if the applicant does the second application we could see it that's just my thought i'm just okay. tired just, of debating just as a point of information they can apply <coughs> for the special permit next week but there's no way that it's going to be advertised heard or anything else in two weeks that's not possible councilor lisi um i think Everybody would benefit from having um, some time and perspective on this issue, and I think the entire conversation could be streamlined if we take up both questions at once. So I'll second Councillor Roman's uh, motion. Councillor Sullivan? Yeah, I have a question for the applicant. Through me? Through, through the chair? Ask, yeah. When did you begin this process? I can answer that. Yeah. Um, the application was filed June 5th. Okay, it was filed May 16th that came to council, June 5th. That's my question, when it was, when it was filed. Mm -hmm. All right. And for the app, through the chair? Yes, May 16th, it's stamped city clerk's office. Okay, and through the chair, if, if I could, how, how many planning board meetings, ordinance meetings, uh, DPW, OPED, Building Commissioner, how many meetings have you attended or had to go through so far since May 16th? I, if the applicant wishes to answer the question of the counselor through the chair, it, he's looking for the number of meetings you've attended relative to this application. How many have you attended? Yes. Great. Right. This is a third. Thank in you. ordinance and in planning? Sorry, what? And the planning board? They have not had we, a we have not dealt with the planning board or any other town department on this. Our understanding was, just to clarify, that we filed our application for a pre-existing non-conforming structure to add the machine. That no hearing was required before planning. It didn't require a site plan because it wasn't a large enough project of five or 10,000 square feet to require that. And that because it was coming to the council, that it would be going back if or information was required from planning would go back to planning they would review it and submit the review to the process um, as with the other departments uh, that we expected that they had concerns and we really didn't expect any concerns because the site's in existence right. and is not changing right and we've covered this ground and we are where we are and it's unfortunate that there was this confusion and communication gaps but here we are and so we need to get it right and fix it I want to make sure that we do not jeopardize the applicants timeline relative to um, what I consider to be some technical problems that existed in the city relative to the application um, if it's the will of the committee to table it to the next meeting if it becomes evident that the timeline is at the next meeting um, rather than punish the applicant for these process problems. Okay, mm -hmm. Councilor Lisi. Thank you. Um, what was the date of the, t of the um, closing of the hearing? It was September 11th, I believe. So that we should have 90 days from then, right? So that's three months. Hang on. I have that in here. Which means that um, even if it took three weeks for them to file the application and then advertise and then get it before the full city council to send to this committee, we still have roughly 60 days in addition within our timeline. Yes, it's 90 days after the close of the public hearing. Yeah, so I, th I think we, we would still have a full two months after the second special permit was applied for 
and brought before the, the ordinance committee. So we have a motion before us to table. You want to table to the next, what do you want to table it to? And, until we have the other permit before us. <clears throat> I'd rather see us table it to a date certain so that we don't lose track of the timeline. I'd and, rather, then if we, and then if we don't have what we need before us, we can continue it again. But I'd rather not bring the applicant in unnecessarily. Well, they won't have to because they'll know if they didn't apply or not. And if, and if it's not live, we'll just table it again. It's a better way of keeping it. I'll make a amendment to split the difference and say the 23rd. That's literally a month from today. It gives them a month to get their special permit in and get it before us and get it before the council. So I'll make an amendment to a table to the 23rd of October, which okay. should be our next meeting. Okay. And is it? Are you seconding the amendment? Um, we. Second on the 16th, is it? Okay? Hang on. Yes, so the 9th and the 23rd. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You're right. Is there a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So it's tabled to the 23rd. If the application is in and the notices can be given, which would have to happen very soon because the ads will have to run the two times, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's possible. I hear you. Um, Mr. Moreau, do you have the contact information for the applicant and their representative? Uh, yep, it should be. It's in the application. Yep, and we've already had one conversation, so. Okay. Yep. Okay, so hopefully all the communication lines are open and the 23rd will be productive. And additionally, Marco, since you are kind of um, taking on the role of point person to get the information over to um, council, uh, there was a letter from the building department that outlined that you keep on referencing from uh, May 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, if it was not already copied to the council for the bank, do you mind sending that all over with your we're doc Happy to include that, yes. Documents, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to take up item number four. Three. Uh, three, sorry. Second. All in around. favor? Aye. 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 Item three, zone change application for the Colvest Group, LTD for 1575 Northampton Street. Holyoke Mass from current zone R1A to proposed zone BH. Um, as we all know, you're all set. Uh -huh. You're going to probably represent the planning board again, the planning department, so you might as well stay. I just didn't know if you wanted me to say Oh, you're here. fine. Okay. <laughs> um, the public hearing ha has been closed. The purpose of this being on the agenda tonight is for this committee to make a recommendation to the council. So um, any members of the committee wish to be heard on this? Is there a motion? On the call list? Yes. And heard. Public hearing is closed relative to the zone change. Mm -hmm. We did not make a recommendation that night. We had a very long late night. Mm -hmm. We left it on the agenda for tonight for this body to make a recommendation to the council. Um, I'll make a couple of comments since I wasn't at the last meeting. Councilor Lisi? Um, I'm going to, I mean, I have a lot of conflicted feelings about this um, zone change. I, I do think that BH is the proper zone for that parcel. I think that um, it makes a lot of sense given the um, adjacent parcels. Um, I do feel that the constituency that is, I guess, resisting the um, plan, which includes the uh, demolition and um, then re repurposing of the land, uh, 
that constituency that's very vocal and loud is definitely uh, in my ear and creating some conflict for me in terms of representation. So like, if it were up to me and, and I made decisions on my own, um, I would be voting in favor of the um, zone change. However, I feel that I do have a responsibility to represent um, the interests that reach out to me. And, and these are the folks that are reaching out to me. Um, so it, it's not an easy decision. I, I, I think in committee, what I'll, well, what I'll wind up doing here in committee this evening is um, voting in favor of the um, zone change and give it a favorable recommendation to the city council. I'll, I'll tell you right now, however, um, if, when, I get to, when it gets to the full city council, I'm probably not going to be able to vote in favor of it. Um, and in many ways, I hope it moves forward without me, but I'm not going to be able to register um, a vote in favor of the BH zone um, on the final vote. I, I believe with the BH zoning in principle, um, I just feel a responsibility to represent the interests of, of that constituency that's reaching out to me most directly. Thank you. Okay, um, I just wanna make clear that we did receive the letter uh, relative to the dissenting vote of the planning board. This came to us with a four to one recommendation from the planning board. It's a fairly long document. There are extra copies of it here. But um, yep. by way of summary, I would note that there were some process issues noted. Um, there was a concern noted relative to uh, changing zoning for use, not for a project, which we've had many discussions about in these chambers, and um, <coughs> sort of a sense that, and this is a very brief summary, and the full letter is available, um, the sense that there was sort of a foregone conclusion on the part of the dissenting writer um, relative to the majority of the planning board. Um, for my part, I have listened very carefully. I have heard from, uh, both. I've heard from people in favor of this project and I've heard from people in opposition to the project. I have spent most of my time listening to all of the various arguments. I have found both sides to make compelling arguments, but when I sat down and did my final analysis relative to the history, the use, and the movement within the city, um, I found one compelling issue. The most compelling issue for me was a detail out of history. I am not a fan of eminent domain. This property was taken by the city under eminent domain. It was a business zone prior to that movement, which I'm not a fan of. This, in my research and hearing of testimonies relative to this property would be basically returning it to the use that it was prior to the building of the school. And so while I do find a number of the arguments of the opponents personally compelling, um, I can't say that I find them to be necessarily representing the majority of the people in the city or the voters of the city. I do think they were very articulate. I think they made very good arguments. Um, I just find myself more swayed by the arguments to grant the zone change relative to the project. Does anybody else wish to be heard? If not, does anybody want to, uh, pardon? I think Councilor McGivern wants oh, to. Oh, Councilor McGivern. Thank you, Councilor Bacon and members of the committee. I just wanted to go on record that I'd be voting in favor of the zone change. This, this is about use. A zone change is always about use. If you vote against a zone change because of the proponents wanting a different use, then you're, we're not doing our jobs. We already had the opportunity to discuss the Winch School property and what type of what type of use should be there. It began in 1999 when we did the master plan and we heard from a large constituency that recognized this as a area off the highway that needs to be developed for the stable economy of the city itself. We, we recognized it when Culverst answered an RFP 
sent out through Mayor, Mayor Morse's office, sent out to the city looking for a developer. And there were multiple developers. The one that the mayor put in front of us was Colvest. We went through this process with Colvest onto their, their intended use for the property. And we allowed the sale of the property pending a zone change to go to this developer. I, I agree. The people who have been with the planning board and now with us and talking about issues that are important to them is, is something that is important to us. But this process has gone by. And, and to reverse that process, to me, is sending the wrong message in terms of what economic development is about. We have always said we can agree to disagree and still respect each other. I respect the people who came forward and talked about things. I disagree with some of their arguments. I disagree with the condition of Lynch School. Its days have gone by. I disagree with the amount of money it would take to renovate it. The only developer that came forward that wanted Lynch School as it is was to make it into the largest marijuana mall in, in the country. Um, that's something I have a problem with, you know, not the marijuana part, but to be the largest mall of marijuana in the country across the highway. Would it save the building? Yes, but I don't think that's what the residents of Hoyoke want in that location. So I, I think it's about use. We've already gone by with the, uh, with the property issues more than once because we revisited with the school committee when some members wanted it back as a school. We revisited it when the charter school came before us and we said no, and we revisited it when they talked about a CVS. But this is like the fourth or fifth time we revisit the issue about Lynch School. Tonight is about use. BH has been, has been proposed since 1999, an economic development use, and I would ask the committee to consider that in their deliberation tonight and what you present to the full city council. Thank you. Councilor Bartley. Uh, hi, hi, Marcos. Uh, thanks for being here. Marcos, in, in your letter of, or uh, in Chris's letter of September 19th, it says, Oh, wait, wait, where's, where's, it, I'm sorry, September 11th, uh, unless I, oh, wait a minute, no, this is a letter of September 9th, okay, so this is his letter, okay, so in the letter it says, uh, uh, further written recommendation and dissent forthcoming, so the written recommendation, which I'm just seeing now, is dated September 19th, and it said the question before the board was regarding recommendation by zone change. It was known that the details of the proposed plan would be addressed under site plan review, which is, uh, that's an important point that I, I don't think many of us have talked about. Uh, the city at the crest of the city council sought RFP, which were properly advertised according to the master general law. The RFP is received and reviewed, and the recommendation is to accept the proposal. So that was the extent of the analysis that we received, about a paragraph. And then, um, and then, Marcos, we, we received a fairly lengthy letter from um, Commissioner Panich uh, relative to this. So, um, you know, not having been in the room for for for, for all those hearings, Marcos, what, do you want to do? You want to uh, sort of enlighten us as to you know, pro provide a little more detail as to why the planning board majority voted the way they did, and I and I, and I read for myself why the minority voted the way the way she did. Sure, um, I'll, I'll do my best to make the representation on behalf of, of the majority of the board. Um, unfortunately, the, the recommendation letter is, is, is curt um, and reflects you know, the, basically what was said at the moment of the vote. Um, during the, and, and I would say specifically with site plan review is because of, there was a lot of commentary about specifics that at the hearing about things that normally go into site plan review, like concerns about traffic and what it'll look like. Um, and the reference to the RFP was because there was a lot of comments on, you know, if we could only get this other use or if it, if it was properly marketed, you know, and, and disposed of in, in that way. So I think that's, that's why those comments came to light at the, at the time of the vote. Uh, the planning board had several public hearings as well as I think it was at least three. Um, I did miss one because I was on vacation. Um, and so, you know, the, the business highway was seen as an expansion of the existing uh, zone at that intersection, uh, just uh, just north, just south, and east of it. Um, from the intersection of Dwight Street and Northampton Street, you have um, you have business highway zones. Um, doing any other, doing any use at the site, even the reuses, multiple uses that were suggested at the public hearing, would require a zone change. 
Uh, however, arguably, some of those reuses that were suggested could very well put the city in a position of having to pursue a spot zone, which, as this committee knows, is illegal. A business highway zone expands what is already naturally there um, and allows for a reuse of the property. Uh, a use, as in maybe going off of the uh, the point of Council McGivern here, uh, the issue before them was was use and highest and best use. And so reactivating a site next to the highway um, requires a new zone. Um, it doesn't mean that they're voting on the actual project itself. The project itself, as, as Council McGivern said, was a decision made uh, by other parties, not the planning board. Um, so um, for anything to go forward, it would, it would need a, a business highway zone there. Right, and, and then the, just, just in Commissioner Panta's letter, uh, the, I, I don't remember, but in, in the RFP, but was there any consideration as to, as to making that section a residential area? Right, and I, I only had a brief moment to skim the, the letter. And so I think what you're referencing is that there's a, there's a section that talks about the city didn't even consider residential. In and, the RFP. and so, I mean, respectfully, what I would, what I would say is, as part of the staff that wrote the RFP is I, I think that's a misunderstanding of, of the text. I understand and respect the real estate agent who said, you know, I read that and to me it says that, you know, we will not consider residential. Um, there is a portion of the RFP that, that talks about submitting the technical proposal and it says, you know, it, it, it says submit commercial or residential uh, proposal. Um, okay, well, that's, that's an important point, I think. That, so uh, we do mention residential. I mean, is it, you know, if we want to argue what the emphasis was, you know, that's fine. There, there's also a sentence that says, ideally, it is a, a commercial development. So that's not something that also we were trying to hide. We were trying to signal, yes, ideally, we have a commercial use. We were also taking into consideration the fact that if, we, that if you have a large residential use, it, it may be harder to fit in zoning, but also understanding that realistically having um, the high level of traffic that you have there uh, would likely make it uh, less palatable for, uh, for residential use off the highway. And what any use, commercial or residential, needs to take into consideration, particularly for re reusing the building, is the the very little availability of parking of course when you have a, a school was it, was it an elementary school or middle, middle school? school either way no you know they don't drive right <laughs> um the the problem for schools is, is drop-offs so no I, I i i i understand the appreciation of it and and i understand that someone brought it up but uh, i would i would just disagree and point out that there are elements in the rfp that did uh, allow for the consideration of, of residential we never um, I certainly disagree categorically with the very categorically assertion in the dissent that says the city could not review residential. That's, that, that, that is not, uh, it's not accurate. Okay, that's, well, that's, that's very helpful. And I think that one of the other important points that she raised, and I think other councils have raised too, about how we market, uh, mar market these, these properties. And I, I think from what I really, I, I lean on other councilors more so, but I, from what I'm hearing is that you're, you're really making an effort to, to market into some wide, widely read journals. And sure. so we, 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 we're marketing as best we can. Right. And, but, um, but in, in one of the points of the, the, the commissioner raised is, um, you know, was it really marketed for eight years or 10 years or just how, how well was it marketed? Right, and and so um, truth truth is usually nuanced and, and a little bit more complex, um, and so I'll, I'll I'll go a little bit into that. One of the points, as you say, is that the property wasn't actually marketed from the point that it was uh, vacant. Uh, in fact, it wasn't transferred to the city until um, late two thousand and ten, um, and so in the dissent, she goes into periods in which. Uh, not only there was no RFP, but there were, there were other actions being taken. So, for example, uh, in 2012, there was a consideration for, for a charter school, um, and that for a significant portion of time, um, it was under contract with, uh, with Frontier Development. So the, it, at some point in the dissent, there's a conclusion that really the, the amount that it's been marketed is four to six months. That, that's, that's what's stated here. Um, what I would... See, I'm, I'm, I'm having to, to talk about the majority of the planning board and the minority. What I would, what I would characterize is that, number one, there was an RFP 
uh, prior to even the, the, the charter school, there was, there was an RFP in 2011 um, that got zero responses. Um, and just in general, outside of the framework of requests for proposals, um, the, the real estate market for these big properties, you know, you have, you, chapter 30B requires us to have an open period to, to solicit proposals. That doesn't mean that there isn't a constant conversation amongst the development community and municipal officials. I mean, that's, that's a significant part of the things that we do on a day to day. Um, and I can tell you that um, people that seek these these projects or that we would want to pitch to them have have had no interest in Lynch, um, and that's not by any fault of, I'll say our own, the the big R, um, the city, city officials, city leadership, residents. It's it's a tough site. It's it's small relative to the building, right? So the parking is an issue. It has a lot of traffic, um, and so anything there you will be concerned about traffic impact. Um, and it's an old building uh, that needs very substantial renovations, even though it's not, you know, it's not falling down. That, that is true. It's not, it's not like the former Essex Hotel. That doesn't mean that it doesn't need a very significant amount of investment. So, so the building inherently and the site inherently has a lot of bad qualities. Um, the periods that have been marketed or even the, the period that it was under contract with Frontier we need to remember that they had an initial concept to tear down the building and have a very specific tenant for pharmacy use that pretty early on they got the signal from talking with um, community members or, or, or city leadership that that was not a desired use. There was already two pharmacies in the corridor. It didn't really add to the offerings in the city. And so they rather quickly um, tried very aggressively to get other tenants uses either to demolish the building and build new or, or to or to rehab the building so my broader point is just because that there isn't an open period for a solicitation in the city there are many ways in which we work to try to attract the use um, at, a, at a site and whether that be through conversations or when Frontier was here they were you know it was on their dime they had spent already a significant amount of money on due diligence the environmental reports that the city now has an inherent and inherits from that contractual relationship with them, um, and they they could not secure anchor anchor tenants. Some of which, you know, people say, wouldn't it be great to have X company or Y company? Yeah, you know, they approached them, but there there was no interest. So I would just um, beware of characterizing it as people have only known this for four months. Well, no, it's it's been a long period, and 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 a lot of companies have been asked. Right, I appreciate that, and I, I think that there was also not that this is the best way, but I think Kevin wanted us to put up literally a for sale sign out there. And I think we did at one point have, yes. have, I mean, I'm not saying it's the best way to market a property, but there, that, that was out there the whole month after month after year after year. So that it was noted to the public for any, and that's a fairly heavily traveled highway. And so, uh, I mean, the, re the rest of her letter goes into kind of internal control issues, if you will, with, with the planning board. And I, I don't really think they're relevant to, to our matter here. So Madam Chair, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna make my vote clear. I, I, where other counselors go, it's hard to say, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, uh, excited about this, uh, this applicant. I think the applicant is before me at least five times, um, been very straightforward. I mean, I, we realize that they're business people. We realize that they're in business to make profit. Um, but at the same time, I, I think we as a city have to, <laughs> I, I mean, here, here's somebody that's local, here's somebody that, that wants to, you know, has, has a plan, and, and here's somebody that's going to be w with whom the city's going to have to work for, I, I think, a number of years. That's just, and, and, and we realize now just how important that corridor is uh, to the residential component in, uh, in the north end of the city, um, in the Highlands, and we realize just how important that is to that area. Uh, as they, they consider the gateway residents there and, and now I'm very sensitive to their their concerns uh, I, I really want to I express my appreciation for Commissioner Panich's letter I, I thought it was it, it, there were so many great points that she touched upon and uh, that's why I wanted to sort of sort of sort of pull some of those ghost cords out with, with Marcos's uh, input because Marcos uh, with the exception of one meeting he was there at all the other public hearings and the process so uh, I, I think the applicant um, it's going to, I think ultimately it's going to be a credit to the city and uh, I'm, I'm confident that this is the right choice moving forward. Is that a motion? 
Uh, I'll, well, I, I, I don't know if anybody else wants to speak, but I'll, okay, uh, then I'll make a motion to uh, to uh, grant the zone change. Second. So we have a motion before us, Councilor Sullivan. I got a chance here. Sure, <laughs> okay. the motion is up, and now we discuss. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to weigh in. I'm going to be very much in favor of this. One thing I'd like to get on the record is I'd like to uh, defend the other four members of the planning board that did vote in favor of this, uh, hearing that uh, they were being accused of a foregone conclusion. I did attend those planning board meetings. Those four people did a very good job of vetting this thing out thoroughly, asking the hard questions, and making a good decision. They did it in the face of a small, vocal group that came forward at the last minute and twisted the conditions of that building, all right? Twisted the safety and the, the and the condition and the environmental effect, uh, the tax implication. They twisted that to the public, the historic significance, and the thing that offended me the most is they come at the very last minute, after 20, 19 years, with no plan, no money, just an obstructionist view, as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, and then as far as anything residential and any ideas put forward that by the by by the the their their own admissions that building contains asbestos who would buy a condo who would buy a residence in this day and age knowing that it contains something like that that is just folly all right, so I'm, I'm going to be very, very much and strongly in favor of this going forward. So we have a motion before us to approve the zone change. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Right. The recommendation goes to the council 5-0 and will be at the next city council meeting. Thank you. All who are here on that matter? Motion to take number four off the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item four is a special permit application from Holyoke Gardens LLC for a marijuana manufacturing establishment at 5 Appleton Street. At our last meeting, we made a recommendation to the city council in favor of this special permit. We received a late file communication from the building department at the city council meeting. We therefore, the city council voted to return it to committee. I requested a legal opinion relative to our role and our jurisdiction relative to this special permit. We've received that from Attorney Barnes tonight, and thank you, Crystal, for doing this so promptly. Um, my, um, do I need, Crystal, properly, do I need to read this into the record? Okay, so just to be thorough, um, I'll read it into the record. It's dated today to the ordinance committee. Dear counselors, this correspondence is regarding the recent information received from the building commissioner in relation to 5 Appleton Street and the special permit request of Hoyo Gardens LLC. The ordinance committee had requested information on whether they would be able to take in and discuss new information received considering the public hearing had been closed at the prior ordinance committee meeting. Pursuant to city charter section 48, every officer of the city shall at the request of the city council give it such information in writing as it may require in relation to any matter, act, or thing connected with his office or employment or with the discharge of the duties thereof. This section is indicative of the need for interdepartmental communication concerning a variety of issues that may present themselves to the city. It is intended to encourage departments to be utilized for their expertise in fact-finding on behalf of the city council. Although the public hearing on this special permit has been closed, it does not deter the city council or a subcommittee thereof from continuing to request, receive, or discuss further information from city departments. In response to the nature of the communication received, be advised that courts have ruled that permit granting authorities shall not consider character and reputation unless explicit by statute. The board's position is legally untenable. It injects criteria not found in the Enabling Act or in the bylaw. And this is a reference, right? The Crystal? board's decision? This is a reference. It's uh, uh, as a citing as a reference. Um, it injects criteria not found in the Enabling Act or in the bylaw. The criteria in the Act and bylaw relate to the land, 
not, as the board brief argues, the character and reputation of the applicant. This is a Dowd versus Board of Appeals in Dover, Mass. So this is a citation. And it goes on to say it would further appear, it would appear that the applicant's principles have previously run afoul of the town's environmental regulations, and in fact, one of the principals pleaded guilty to misdemeanor environmental violations. The board contends, therefore, that it is within its discretion to decline a comprehensive permit because of the principal's past violations. The board cites no, to no authority for the proposition that it may deny the permit on the basis of the prior conduct of the developer's principals. Rather, the board simply points out that there is no regulation that prevents it from doing so. However desirable it might appear, the board cannot inject criteria not found in General Law, Chapter 40B, or the local bylaw. See Dowd versus Board of Appeals of Dover. Again, that reference. The Cannabis Control Commission details their applicant review process under 935 CMR 500.101 which further addresses a quarry requirement and background check of applicants, which would imply that the state review process would obtain the purview of monitoring applicants in this regard, not the local permit granting authority. If you have any questions or need anything further, please feel free to contact me. Very truly yours, Crystal Barnes, Assistant City Solicitor. So I thank, you have a copy. So um, I thank her providing this. My initial concern was that the reference property in the letter from the building commissioner was not the property that was seeking the special permit in the first place. And it is my further understanding that the spokesperson is not a principal of the group seeking the special permit either. So I think we made the recommendation to the city council properly. I think that the legal information we have before us affirms that and so I guess uh, my recommendation to the committee would be to send it back the same way we Almost. sent it in the first place. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to take number five off the table. Um, if the committee is willing. Oh, oh, we, oh for, uh, for Bob? Yeah. Where is it? Oh, maybe he took a break because he knew we were still going. Where are you going? All right. I was going to save this till later oh, sure. in, in interest of his schedule but We'll, we'll keep going then. Get right through it. I'm sorry? I think we just get right through it. Okay. So okay. item five, filed by Council Bartley, that the city create a temporary sign ordinance that regulates when such temporary signs can be placed in homeowners' yards and on commercial buildings or otherwise in the public view. Just by way of review, the public hearing was closed on this. We received feedback from the planning board. Um, they voiced some concerns about constitutionality. It was noted that the reason that we made the changes and the way that it was crafted was specifically to avoid the constitutional challenges. And so we have before us the opportunity to make a recommendation to the council. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carries 5-0. No, motion to take number six off the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Perrin, I thank you for your patience. Were you sitting there the whole time? Yes, sir. He was, and I, you know, and I was just going to skip this one, but then we did it quickly. What's it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I did let him know that due to unforeseen circumstances, we had to <laughs> add things to our agenda. Wow. So I, I ser sincerely appreciate your patience. It's all um, part of the job. We also have from him before us on the table his summary yeah, so recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so a motion was made to take up item six. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item six, filed by Councilor LeBron Martinez, order that signs be placed saying do not block driveway on 3739 Sarmaset and in front of any of the homes on Sarmaset across from the McNally Field Park where homeowners have driveways. Um, I'll give her my copy. Oh. Sure, I did bring 10 copies yeah, yeah, of. There's more here. Okay, great. Let me dig it on my computer. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, 
if you'd like me to speak to that, um, in summary, I'll, I'll say that we are not recommending those signs be installed, and I'll explain the reasons why. There really are two reasons. One is that, as you probably know, the Holyoke Code of Ordinances already prohibits parking. Um, and in fact, the word out of the words out of the ordinance are in front of or within five feet of either edge or point of curb return of any driveway, alley, or private road. So there's already within the city's code of ordinances an enforceable limitation that, for instance, would give the, the public safety officials the right to go ahead and cite vehicles that are parked in front of a driveway. So there's, there's not a necessity to create something new for the purpose of enforcement. So then the sense would be that if somebody has a problem with this, they, would, they could call the police department and it's enforceable as it is. Absolutely. The second piece being new to the city, as you know, I went through fairly quickly because it's a pretty long table, but table one or table I, which contains all the parking limitations across the entire city. Mm -hmm. And I took a look at, are there similar type of restrictions in existence anywhere within that current table? And the other than being, there being some limitations on loading zones in commercial areas, there are no limitations, there are no parking signs that the council has acted upon to prohibit parking in front of driveways. So that told me that you know, past practice has been to rely upon what the ordinance says oh, okay. and that the council hasn't seen the need to go beyond that in the past. My motion to, uh, well, I don't know. Well, I just will make a motion to accept the recommendation of the city engineer. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Take it by number seven. Second. All in favor? Aye. Five by Councilor Bartley ordered that the city engineer provide recommendations as to whether no parking signs should be placed on the eastern end of West Glen Street where it connects with Northampton Street. The number of cars that park there on both sides of the street cause potential traffic congestion as well as issues for public safety vehicles. Okay, and responding to that again, I think there are really two items that I want to call attention to. One, I did take a look at is what is being done currently on the corridor of Northampton Street all the way from the westbound of side of, of or west side of Northampton Street all the way between Westfield Street and Whiting Farms Road. I believe there are eight cross streets that including um, West Glen Street. Six of those eight cross streets currently have no parking signs at the intersection so the city has clearly seen the need uh, for streets that really are, are identical to West Glen to limit parking at the end of the street for the reasons that are cited in the order. So we would agree with the, with the request and recommend that no parking signs be installed on West Glen as have been installed elsewhere on that corridor. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept the recommendation. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to take number eight off the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Filed by Linda Vacan that truck restrictions be placed on Southampton Road 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., the same as Homestead. This road is not intended for heavy truck traffic. Trucks can use routes 5 and 10 when Route 141 is closed. Okay. Um, this one is a little bit more complicated explanation. Um, heavy commercial vehicle traffic restrictions are regulated by the Mass DOT. You need their approval before you can post a roadway uh, restricted to heavy commercial vehicles. The standards that they are governed by is something known as the Massachusetts Amendments to the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices, MUTCD, which you may have heard of in the past. There are two parts of that that are potentially problematic. One, the standards that MassDOT has says that you restrict commercial traffic if there is a significant amount of traffic on that roadway. If there's only one truck that goes down there, um, you know, once a day, there's no need to put up signs because the problem isn't significant. The standard that they typically use is five to eight percent of the total vehicles being heavy commercial traffic. Um, again, I, I meant to mention at the beginning that myself and Mike McManus put this together. We both put our heads together on this, and we we think it's pretty unlikely that five to eight percent of the vehicles that are going down Southampton Road today um, are heavy commercial vehicles. The second piece of that that I think is really even problematic is there's a requirement, and this is different than Homestead Ave. Homestead Ave, that limitation began and ended fully within the city of Holyoke, and the detour would begin and end within the city of Holyoke. What MassDOT requires is that if a community wants to 
um, impose a commercial vehicle restriction, they have to identify an alternate route. And that alternate route, if it impacts adjoining communities, has to receive the approval of the adjoining community. And also 5 and 10. And 5 and 10. So you take a look at how do you get, for instance, to County Road or to Line Street in Southampton if trucks are not allowed to go down Southampton Road. And the corridor would most likely either be going north up to the East Hampton, North Hampton line and probably going down East Street at the base of the mountain and cutting back into East Hampton. Given that that is a city roadway, it's not a state roadway, the city would have to approve that as an alternate route. Um, if you were to go southbound on Route 5, you're probably cutting through West Springfield, impacting West Springfield, possibly impacting Westfield as well. So there's a lot of moving pieces and most likely several local communities that would have to sign on to local roads in their communities being identified as an alternate route to traveling down Southampton Road. And, and for that reason as well, we thought it was very unlikely that we would get those approvals or the city would get those approvals and that this would be able to move forward. Thank you for that. And I guess uh, my only question would be is fairly often, and it seems more often than mm. in the past, the town of East Hampton is closing 141, which is impacting Holyoke. Right. And that is what has given rise to more and more trucks going down Southampton Road. Because once 141 is closed and they find out, oh, I don't have to go all the way down 141 and over, I can now go down Southampton Road, they are beginning to use the road more and more, you know, than in the sure. past. It's like anything that becomes more known. Right. But I mean, again, I would have to defer to you relative to the percentage, but the people who live there have definitely noticed the increase. I can't say it meets sure. the thresholds you're speaking to, but is there any, since there is this issue relative to this would be impacting other communities, is there any impetus that we can bring to bear on East Hampton to maintain 141 so it isn't closed? I mean, we don't close 202. Mm. I mean, why are they closing 141? I mean, that's hurting Holyoke. That's so I don't know if that same rule applies, <laughs> but um, maybe in the interest of collaboration, we could reach out to East Hampton to say, yo, can you keep your road open and <laughs> treat it? Well, I mean, seriously, no. there's lots of towns that have steep hills. <laughs> being that, being a resident of East Hampton. I'm sorry? No, I, I live in East Hampton, so I've driven over the, you know, the mountains well, thousands of uh, times in my and lifetime. I, and I know it's a tough hill. Right. I'm not, I'm not yeah. minimizing right. it. It's, it's but so, but so is 202. Right. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. So. My... General sense is the large semis are typically not driving down 141 down the oh, mountain. Oh, the really, really. I rarely see because one, they can't get back up the mountain if they try yeah. to go down the mountain. Do you you do see large vehicles and they struggle getting up the mountain sometime if you happen to get behind them, you know, <laughs> the traffic backs up quite some, quite a distance sometimes. So I I think there's almost a natural sort of self-selection that the that heaviest of the commercial <laughs> vehicles generally don't follow that corridor. Um, but when the road closes, yeah, anybody that wants to get to East Hampton or get to South Hampton or get to North Hampton through that route is going down South Hampton Road. So I, I think the idea of having conversation, I think, is a good one. Um, I probably actually, to do a little fact-finding, I'll start with Mass DOT to get a better sense of your question of, you know, you have an adjoining community that is shutting down a roadway impacting another community, what responsibilities, obligations might they have? Yeah, and I mean, I'm just trying yeah. to be an advocate sure. for the <laughs> constituents that are raising the concern. And the other um, piece of information might be that the size of the trucks, although they're experiencing it as big trucks, might not even <coughs> meet the test for what the restriction would be. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they are big, but they're maybe not that big. Right. And, you know, Southampton Road in the wintertime, it's a long, steep grade that goes on and on and on. Um, so I understand if you're a resident that happens to live in a driveway on, on Southampton Road. It, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so I will reach out to MassDOT. I will have that conversation. I, I 
know folks in East Hampton very well. In fact, I sit on the East Hampton Energy Committee, and I also am actually on their Charter Review Committee, and so I, I know the mayor fairly so well. Talking to the right person so for more I, reasons than one. <laughs> I have plenty of opportunities to have that conversation as a representative of Holyoke. That would be greatly appreciated. Okay. A friendly conversation, Absolutely. of course. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, to me, that's complied with. Yeah. Motion. 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 Second. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion take number nine. nine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Filed by Tom and LeBron Martinez. No parking be allowed from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, on the west side of Maple Street, from the fire hydrant at the cul-de-sac to the corner of St. Colby Drive. Three no parking signs will be needed. The, the reason for this is a safety issue around the school yes. and people queuing and that kind of congestion. Right. And um, the maker of the order did ask if he needed to be here. I said I thought it looked pretty straightforward. Motion approved. <laughs> well, <laughs> should we read it? <laughs> we, we would agree, and we've gone as far as to actually write what needs to be amended in the ordinances as part of our recommendation, so we can go right. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Order filed. Oh, all, did, I, did I say all in favor? Aye. Yeah. <laughs> um, filed by Roman and Councilor Bartley. The city discontinued the PVTA bus stop, stop ID number 0459, located between Sargent and Franklin Streets. There is a stop nearby. Further, this stop eliminates needed on street parking spaces. So from a DPW standpoint, we certainly understand the benefit to the city in terms of creating additional on-site parking. Um, I believe at this point it's in PVTA's hands and, you know, um, How's that? because I believe it's been, well, I, I, I believe a copy of the order was sent to PVTA looking for a response back from PVTA and I don't know if that's been received to date. Yes, but I don't think we need it to, to discontinue no. the okay. bus stop and we can just let them know we don't okay. want it right. yeah i think most to approve right. yeah second second that one all in favor aye, aye. aye. motion take up item number 11. second oh. favor uh, filed by Councilor Lisi that DPW superintendent assess the placement of a signalized crosswalk near the Homestead Ave entrance to HCC. We've had this bef up it's before, been ongoing. Oh. Yep. and oh, we've gosh. tabled it. And it seems like we're making nice progress on it. Um, I'm, I mean, Councilor Bartley, I'll, I'll defer to you as well. Um, but to me, I'm happy to say it's complied with at this point in time. It seems like it's moving forward. There is the case of kind of seeing it to believe it. <laughs> so, so there is also, you know, uh, there, there's a possibility of leaving it tabled and, and revisiting it. But Bob? Yeah, um, as, as I indicated here, and I probably as the council knows, the city did receive a $400,000 complete streets grant from MassDOT that Mike had applied for and was one of a handful of communities that were successful. Just um, congratulations. Yeah, that you. is one of the yeah. eight items yeah. that the MassDOT will fund. Mike and I were talking about design level details today, so it's oh, very great. much in the pipeline. Okay. And as I indicated here, will be completed probably not this fall because we may run out of time, but certainly next spring. In fact, we have to in order to hold on to the funding. Mm -hmm. The funding will go right. away. All right. So I'll, I'll second Rebecca's motion. Motion to comply. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Motion to by number 12. Second. So that was timely. <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> Um, filed by Councilor Vacan, that speed limit signs 30 miles per hour be installed on Mountain Road. Request two to three on each side of the road. And I put this on, and I did understand the answer that you gave. Okay. At a previous meeting, the recommendation that came out of the committee was to request that the police department do a reasonable speed study, given the unique characteristics and aspects of that road. But that letter never got sent over to the police department yet. So I just put it back on the agenda to keep it alive um, because I really, if you've had a chance to go down that road, there is no way on earth it should be a 40 mile an hour speed limit. I mean, there's horse farms, there's curves, there's houses practically 20 feet from the road. <laughs> it's uh, right. unique. So 
we were hoping that we could get a different kind of study done and and get a different result. Sure. And my understanding is that the council has typically relied on the police department for commentary on public safety and vehicle safety if, issues more so than the technical does it meet the 85th percentile speed in some of the other types of criteria. In certain circumstances. Yeah. Um, is there anything the DPW can do or should do to move that along? Well, um, the motion had been made that the letter would just come back to be seen <clears throat> before it went Okay. to the police department. Personally, I don't feel the need to see the letter as long as I know it will just go and just initiate mm. and that everybody's on the same page as to what we're looking for. You know, so, I mean, my bottom line is if it's 40 miles per hour, I don't even want the report. Mm. <laughs> just leave it alone. <laughs> but, um, you know, because it, it's just, it's a little scary out there. <laughs> but, um, so if you sure. could just do that, I'd be fine okay. with that. So just for my clarification, when you say the letter, is are you referring to the subcommittee's decision to um, uh, submit the order to the police department? Oh, or, okay. So I, I don't think know if that, you if, indicated it hadn't got to them for some reason. If I remember the way that we... Mike shared with us that another approach to the speed okay. limit would be to send this letter of request over to the police department because they would then do a different kind of a study and make a recommendation back to the committee. And I think at the moment he'd been requested to give the letter back to us before it went to okay. them. Um, I'm fine with it just going to them. So I understand it's a letter from the DPW at to, yes. for the benefit of the the subcommittee to request the, the police department to do the safety study? Yes. Okay, I understand what we yes. need to Okay. Thank you. So we'll just table Motion this? Motion to table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion, Motion to table. Aye. Aye. Item number 13. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> by Councilor Valentin, that the DPW superintendent review the possibility of resident parking only on Pine Street between Appleton and Essex, request from residents. We have looked at it. We do understand that that road is residential only, so that limiting parking to, to resident, residents only wouldn't have an impact on businesses or commercial entities and are ready to move forward and would recommend or support the council's Motion decision. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Hey, you got in the room. You've got to be quick with that. Uh, I told this one. You've got to be quick. 